It's always exciting to dive into a new JRPG from one of the genre's veterans. Monarch comes to us from Kazunari Suzuki, best known for his work on the Megami Tensei and Shimigami Tensei franchises, so it had a ton of potential. To its credit, it does introduce some fresh combat mechanics to an otherwise straightforward tactical JRPG structure. But Monarch continuously trips over itself elsewhere due to a disjointed story, static puzzles, and repetitive level design that made staying interested a lot harder than it should have been. Monarch sets up a high-stakes story that takes place at Shin Mikado Academy, where a mysterious barrier looms over the school grounds and makes it impossible for anyone to leave. You take control of a Pact Bearer, someone who has gained powers through a deal with an otherworldly demon called a Monarch. A demon? No. A Monarch? How did you get into this academy? This setup is engaging to start, but it never develops much tension. Most of the characters are interesting with distinct personalities and solid voice performances to sell them, but by the time there's any real effort put towards fleshing out these characters, you've already hit the climax of the story, making it too little, too late. One clever idea is the way Monarch uses your answer to psychological test questions as the main factor in determining your character's personality, better known as Ego, and the order in which you unlock powerful fiends based on the seven deadly sins as companions. That helped make my playthrough feel unique to me, my first fiend was Gluttony, who focuses on lowering enemy stats while buffing themselves in return. But someone else might get Envy, who deals extra damage to enemies who are under a status effect, which is a very different style. It would have been nice if fiends had personalities outside of combat, but sadly they're purely tools to be used. Monarch's greatest sin though is repetition. Each section of the story is built around a different party member, but the objectives are always the same. Switch into another plane of reality to find and destroy three crystals called Ideals. All three are almost always in the same building, so your goal is usually to clear out each floor one at a time. Mostly that involves solving mundane puzzles by looking through documents or student profiles on your phone, and that kind of sleuthing never felt satisfying. Another idea that doesn't really work out is the madness mechanic, at least as it relates to the real world. If you stay around the mist for too long and your bar hits 100%, you will collapse and reawaken in the school's infirmary, which is kind of a waste of time since you can easily fast travel back to the beginning of the floor you were on when you passed out. Once you get into the turn-based battles, you get to experience one of the few shining highlights of Monarch. It's got fun abilities, unique mechanics, and the best part, an excellent soundtrack during boss fights. You have more freedom of movement than most JRPGs because attacks and abilities are based on a circular or angular range. This is a refreshing take simply because it's different, but there were several times where I was frustrated when my character was just a hair out of an attack's range, making me miss the predictability of grid-based combat. A lot of what you do in battle comes with a cost. Art skills are physical in nature and take a chunk off of your health when used, while authorities are magical and sap your sanity, increasing your madness meter. Spending one or the other based on the situation is a meaningful tactical choice that brings another layer of depth to every battle. Madness is meaningful here because if a character hits 100% in combat, you'll lose control of them and they'll attack whoever is closest with dramatically increased power. That can be bad, but it also allows you to make some clever gambles like moving the rest of your units away so that the character who goes mad wipes out your enemies. On the opposite side of the spectrum is becoming Awakened, a state where you gain the same kind of power as in Madness, but maintain full control of your actions. Getting my Awaken meter up never felt like a priority, but if there is a round where you can't hit an enemy, it feels good that you can dedicate your turn to that instead of wasting it. Alternatively, each party member is able to defer their turn over to another character who is already gone, allowing them to act again, but their madness increases more every time they are given an extra turn, which is a good way of limiting this powerful mechanic. Finally, when the stars align, you can become mad and awakened at the same time, allowing you to deal even greater damage without losing control. This only happened a few times in the more than 40 hours my playthrough took, but it's a good feeling. The downside to combat is that the enemies never pushed me out of my comfort zone, so I was never forced to do anything other than my proven routine. Once you figure out the optimal way to position your party to hit enemies from behind, you'd be foolish to approach a battle with any other method. 
One final annoyance that has to be called out is how often you get stuck having to grind to level up characters when they join the party, particularly in the later sections of the story. That felt like obvious padding that could have easily been solved by auto-leveling them to match the party. Instead, they join you at level 1. Monarch has a lot of interesting ideas that could have come together into a great tactical JRPG, but what's here feels more like a prototype. Its madness mechanic adds interesting choices to its fights, but is mostly irrelevant and annoying outside of combat. And while its well-voiced party members eventually grow on you, I wish I had more time to directly interact with them so I cared about their well-being when it came to major moments in the plot. The real drag though is the repetition in the mission structures, which is the same sequence of events and dull puzzles over and over again with very little variety. For more RPGs, check out our reviews of Lost Ark and Pokemon Legends Arceus. And for everything else, stick with IGN.